This week on Behind the Lens, I'm joined by Tom Robinson. Growing up in rural Lincolnshire, it provided Tom with plenty of subjects to photograph, and a passion soon developed. Tom has travelled extensively across the globe, to areas like Indonesia and Southeast Asia, often journeying out to remote islands and hidden jungles on his search for endemic wildlife. Since returning home, he has started a wildlife photography hide business on the family farm and surrounding land. His hides offer heating, toilets and refreshments, making them the most comfortable hides in Britain. His main objective is to protect and promote the local British wildlife, and a large percentage of his profits are going back into conservation and managing habitats. We put the question to Tom, what are your three most memorable images? I suppose this is memorable for, for a funny reason really, I mean the, the, the day it was taken was the 8th of August, which is my birthday, and at the start of the day my girlfriend at the time asked me what, what do you want to do, it's your day, and, um, and yes yeah, so I said oh, I photographed the swallows. <laughs> So for the whole day, I sat I sat there photographing the swallows, tweaking the um, tweaking the setup. You can see at the back there, the way it's just come through, that's actually a bit of plyboard set back because the um, the the background was a bit cluttered there. So you know, just bringing these things in and changing the lighting, and uh, and yeah, ultimately waiting for the right the right wing position. I mean, it's sort of fraught with problems. You know, one of the one of the most annoying ones, I suppose, was when it flew in with um, a big bee in its mouth so it just sort of covered the face but perfect perfect everything else about the image was perfect apart from that so so yeah no it was um yeah good day really spent like i say memorable from the from just the date more than i think um yeah this was taken in some some old buildings that have actually now been been taken down they've got a bit dangerous with them with with um with just falling apart really so yeah so as as i took down the the buildings i've actually saved some of the bricks and um pan tiles and i'm actually in a, yeah, a couple of weeks time building up an owl tower out of the uh, reclaimed materials so that to further further conservation efforts with barn owls and um, and bats and and swallows in fact as well with the the recent buttons on the wall for those to hopefully yeah use in the shelter it was because of the time of year more than anything as well it was it was the 8th of august like i said so it's it's getting late in the year you know these were their final clutches the clutches were getting big so it was sort of now or never and you know you're fairly busy anyway it was yeah trying to get that free pass <laughs> it worked it worked well on the birthday i was sat outside just on a chair sort of yeah far enough away that it didn't it didn't bother the swallows and and then internally with my camera with a 24 to 70 mil lens and three flash guns um fired and the camera was fired via radio remote so yeah didn't didn't matter about the obstacles and through the door and stuff like that so i was just waiting for the birds to to sort of approach the hole and just as they disappear through the hole I would hit the hit the shutter. I suppose I had my clients in before and I saw the downfalls of the of the shot. Obviously you're in a very a very dark environment within the reed beds. Um and so you're struggling with things like getting higher using high ISO to, to achieve the F stop required to get everything in focus, which was the, the biggest problem. So yeah, so I introduced a bit of flash but obviously with the flash you know it sort of lit everything up. So it, it was trying to create a create a technique that would work where it would just put the light on what you wanted to see and not light up the whole reed bed so yeah so yeah I use this technique for that and and yeah I, I mean I really like it I really like my, my black backgrounds and um, and had sort of low-key images so so yeah it really stood out and um, I was happy I mean I suppose the me most memorable part of this image was actually finding the nest to start with um, it was the first cuckoo nest I, I, that I ever found or reed warbler with cuckoo in it so so yeah that was a, a bit of a feat in itself for myself um and um and yeah and yeah also that you know subsequently I, I found that nest and the many more i've found since i've sort of started pushing a bit of a conservation effort with with the cuckoo as you know not many ringers out there have time to to go and look for these nests that generally they concentrate on the things like the kestrels and the barn owls that are in the boxes and they're nice and easy to locate and, and ring yeah it was taken local to me at some gravel pits some sort of disused gravel pits it's great great location really i mean it's sort of been maturing now for 25 years so 
just beautiful crystal clear lakes and and yeah lots of stuff there i mean this year alone there was hobby um, red kite buzzard sparrowhawk marsh harrier all nesting just within this this one one complex you know so yeah really fantastic bit of land and, and yeah obviously cuckoos as well so yeah it, it's it's time consuming but but yeah it's uh I would say they're not easy to find, but but they're not difficult if you've got the time to put in. Yeah, I mean they've took a massive decline recently in recent years. I mean I suppose for me back as a kid, you'd hear one, you know, April every year, bang, it'd be like clockwork, um, and and yeah, largely disappeared from around the farm. Um, just just seems to be where there's where there's good habitat now, you know, you know where whereas before they were perhaps they were perhaps everywhere in the woods going. Um, and host birds would have been dunnocks and robins and all sorts. It's now it's, it just seems to be where the um, where there's big reed beds. That's about where all the places I can find them. Yeah, I suppose this this really is I suppose a turning point for me in in regards to my photography. I've been I've been taking photographs sort of well, when this image was taken for sort of sixteen seventeen years and of, of wildlife, and but never really never really pushed it to just pushed it to the extreme really. I never really. Um, fully, fully embraced it. I suppose I, I'd sort of dive in and dive out. I'd, you know, sometimes I'd be, I'd be really keen on it and, and be doing lots of stuff. And then other times the camera would sit in the in the shed in the in the house for sort of, you know, months on end. So so I, I went travelling um, across sort of Southeast Asia and into Australia and um, decided to buy some buy some professional kit, just a D six hundred and a seventy to two hundred mil lens really, and um, and yeah, set off and. And yeah, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in in areas that that, that was good for wildlife, so Silwazi for black crested macaques and um, and tarsiers, and uh, later spent three months doing doing little red flying little red flying foxes in um, Australia, and um, and yeah, so so and then this this image was actually taken at the end of my travels in um, Sri Lanka in a in a small town um, south in the south coast southeast coast. Um, and and yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I was I was with my girlfriend at the time, and we took a walk around, and and I saw this guy, and I thought, yeah, this th there's potential with this. So so I went back the following day, and um, and then spent sort of a, I don't know a good few hours with him, just just taking different shots and just just um, sort of spending some time just seeing how how the day would pan out. I mean, I mean, one of the thing, one of the shots that I really had in mind was was of the um, all the tourists sort of lined up with their camera phones. Taking photos of him while he while he played his he played his um he played his pipe and had, had the cobras dancing in front and you know just to sort of bring that, that element of 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 sort of yeah looking looking in distress I suppose you know the, the monkey's got a rope round it and yeah to bring a bit of awareness there I suppose ultimately and um and yeah so I mean all of these preconceived shots that I had in my head. It, this this actual image was was one that was just just happened upon you know it just walked around the corner and and this is what this is what I was faced with so so yeah so I've been trying all the, all these different images trying to set things up a bit you know trying to get get the lighting right and angles and things like this the actual image was taken yeah just just by walking around the corner so so yeah so then since coming back I always it's one of those images when you when you take an image you sort of know when it's good. And um, and yeah, I mean, subsequently it's, it's, it was awarded in, in one of the big competitions, um, and and yeah, I suppose that's that's did sort of spur me on to to do the the, the hard business and and yeah, ultimately carry on with with the photography. You know, before that, it was sort of like I'm, I'm a waste of my time. I've been doing it a long time um, before and never really never really done it properly. I suppose is, is the word. You know, always dived in and dived out of it. Um, so yeah, it, it did. It sort of it sort of spurred me on. Thanks for watching, and why not check out our other interviews here? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content. Until next time, cheers.